Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Robert, how are you? I'm doing okay, and uh, I should say that I am Robert Wright, and you are Tom Tolles, Pulitzer Prize-winning cartoonist for the Washington Post, and now suddenly a blogger as well, but we'll get to that later. That's that, the that, news hook. That little swerve in your, uh, in your checkered career. Um, you're now blogging, but, but, but I didn't know that when I signed you up, and in fact it wasn't true when you, when you first it wasn't true, uh, not, agreed nor, to do this. Or even contemplated. But. No, but that's the way life is. It's, it's full of change. Um, and so, my first question for you is, where do you get your ideas? <laughs> ah, funny you should I No one has ever asked that question before. I'm kidding. Before. I know, but I actually have an answer. I have oh, a, okay, good, good. I have a drawer behind me that's uh -huh. labeled ideas. It's just full. Oh, good. Well, that makes it easy, because I had actually, I was actually under the impression that you got most of them from watching Blogging Heads TV. I get some of them. Do you? Mm, maybe not. Okay. Well, I enjoyed that moment before you said maybe not. That was a lot of fun. Um, and we can edit out the maybe not. I don't think you do a lot of editing. I've watched a lot of these things. There doesn't seem to be much editing. Not going a on. lot of uh, not a lot of investment in the production process in general. I would say. So, uh, wow, being a I mean, I, I guess we should get to this blog thing right away because it's so weird and it just started this week. I mean, you've been a political cartoonist your whole life. Uh, in, the, in the kind of classic political cartoonist genre, I mean, with the Washington Post, you know. In fact, you are the successor to the storied, legendary Herbert Block, who, I guess, signed his cartoons Herb Block with just one B, so it seemed like one word. Yeah, and people in D.C. never get tired of pointing out to me that I like, am his successor. Oh. It's always fresh. That's all, yeah. Which reminds me, where do you get your ideas? <laughs> um, so, anyway... All of this is, so, so like your career is proceeding normally, and then suddenly, this week, if you click on your cartoons on the Washington Post, you'll see that there's an actual, like, blog entry written by you. And I've got to say, you know, it passes for, uh, for, for decent blogging as far as I'm concerned. I mean, if you told me that it was written by a guy who actually couldn't draw at all and was not a cartoonist, but was making a living as a blogger, I'd go, yeah, that's plausible. Plausible. That's, mm -hmm. wow. That's like, I... You can use that as a blurb. Yeah, plausible. Okay. Um, they're good. And, uh, but, but why? Why, Tom? What happened? Well, technology is changing, and all the business oh, really? is changing. And we've, I've talked about it with the, with the website people here, and I, you know, I, it got to the point where we were just talking about, it. if I ever did blogging, this is how I would sort of like to see it set up. This mm -hmm. is sort of what I, and then all of a sudden, like, last week they came and said, okay, we're all set up, we're ready to go, you start Monday. And I could have done what is characteristic for me and squirmed and say I need another couple of weeks or a month or a year to think about it, you know. Uh -huh. no but I thought, well, you know, they've set up, they said Monday, yeah. I respond to deadlines, I said, okay, let's try it. And it's actually kind of fun. <clears throat> And did they offer you additional money, Tom? Uh, it's, 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 uh, the... That's it's, not a negotiation. It's the, it's the convention. Under active contemplation. I mean, this is the new, uh, uh, you know, this is, journalism is pervaded by the accretion of new duties without a corresponding increase yeah. in salary. Yeah, my notice. strategy was to, to be so good at it and get them so dependent on it that yeah. then I would have the leverage to hit them with the big ask. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with the New York Times. I'm writing a, a weekly online column, and once they become totally dependent on me, you know, like the, the, the organization could not survive without me, mm -hmm. we're going to see some demands rolling out, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I've been reading those. In fact, I had a question about one of them for you, but maybe we'll get to that later. Yeah, I think people are more interested in you and this weird blogging thing you're doing. And... I, well, how are you finding it? It's a totally different world. No, actually, that's one of the things that's surprising is how not totally different at all it is. Uh, oh, I take that back. How are you finding it? It's just like what you were doing already. Well, it's, yeah, except for I don't have to do all that cross-hatching, actually. It's, uh, <laughs> that saves you some time. <laughs> it does. Well, I mean, the essence of cartooning is really not the... Cross-hatching. Yeah, it's not yeah. that. Uh, the essence of cartooning is, and I... Having an having something to say, yeah. finding an interesting way to say it, and putting a picture with it of some mm -hmm. sort. I mean, the, the, it's true that the the drawing is very often so integral that the, you can't quite conceive of that particular bit of commentary without the drawing. Right. But a lot of the guts <laughs> are the same, and um, I don't know. I was that's what I was surprised about. I mean, you have to 
you have to be interesting, have something to say, and be yeah. interesting with it. And you've got that. I mean, really, you actually are a good blogger. But there is a difference in sensibility that I want to ask you about. And, and, I, and I want to ask you whether this creates a kind of identity crisis for you, which I, it sounds like it doesn't. Or at least you haven't perceived the identity crisis it should confront you with. And maybe here I can help. Okay. Wow. Well, you, di- you diagnosed me with a, an illness I didn't know that I had, and then you prescribed the cure. And okay. Well, you didn't have it until this week. It's not surprising that it hadn't come to your attention. Okay, all right. Well, you, you mapped this out for me. I'm what I want to say is, with a, with a cartoonist, there is kind of an air of bemused detachment. Yes. You know, I mean, it's not that you're not ideological. And I'll, put, I'll show one of your recent cartoons uh, here. It's like, uh... uh this, this is the one that says time machine forward to 2012. It's a comment on recent health care legislation. Yeah, yeah. And you've got the Democrat as a donkey saying, uh, saying, I'll hold this up. I have some deficit reduction proposals. And then the Republican replies, Democrats are trying to cut your Obamacare. Um, now, that's a comment. It's an ideological comment. And, and do you want to say anything about that for that matter? As long as well, it's, I mean, it's it's it's. Pretty clearly, what it derives from is that the half the Republican strategy was to uh, say that uh, Obamacare was going to cost too much, and the other half of it was saying he's going to cut too much, and this was just a just a uh, projection of that absurd line of thinking out a little farther. Although I did love to draw that time machine which appeared in the most the time machine itself yeah yeah because that's from the 19, that's from the movie 1960 george pal classic anybody i still have, remember what was the name of the woman with her <laughs> uh that was weena <laughs> i think that was some seriously in place blonde hair yeah i don't know what kind of weather event it would have taken to get a strand of her hair hey well wait till you see watch the the video you will see i've got also seriously in place blonde hair. So careful what you say about that. What? Oh, oh your, your hair? It's like perfect, yeah. Who does your hair? And what do you use on your hair, Tom? Uh, being a cartoonist, I uh, follow the strategy. I wake up in the morning, I look in the mirror. If something is sticking out, I cut it off with scissors. That's, ah. that's essentially my hair care. Uh, that would... Uh, I'm not sure I'd want to follow the logic of that all the way in, in my case. But the... Um, Okay, so that's a cartoon, kind of bemused. It, it is ideological, but there. But 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 first of all, often they're kind of not. I could probably find one. I mean, uh, uh, here's one that's not especially ideological. It's yours, where the re- it's also healthcare. It's the one where you see a basketball that is uh, just just taking a very circuitous route to the basket, right? Yeah, I know. And then at the yeah. end of it, Obama says, you know. It's clearly a lucky shot, and at the end of it, Obama says, I planned that. Right. R- right. Now, that was, but yeah, you're right. That wasn't very ideological, and but that is really very much, that cartoon is very much an exception because 9.5 times out of 10, I mm-hmm. start with an idea, and I'm pretty insistent that the bulk of the cartoons are about something. Now, this this one, I just felt that, the process had been so long and so fraught, and I just had this image of a way to, to, to sum it up that just felt like it captured it, that I, mm-hmm. I broke my own rule and I drew that. But And you're right, it was not ideological, but that was the exception. More of them by far have, have Are, a distinct point that of is view. True. But you'll agree that, I mean, to get back to this contrast between cartooning and blogging, you'll agree that even when they're ideological, with with political cartoons in general, I would say, there's a certain, there's a kind of a gentle air to the comment. There's a kind of, uh, it's almost as if you can imagine, I don't know, you can imagine the cartoonist making the comment about the other party from the other ideological perspective with equal i don't know do you know what i'm saying yeah anyway. i do know what you're saying you're you're trying to construct step by step you're trying to construct an elaborate argument which will 
enable you to contrast the blogging to the cartooning. But And you're trying to get me to agree a little step at a time, but you're wrong on this one. No, it, it's not possible for me, at least, as a cartoonist. Maybe you can imagine me doing cartoons on every point of the political spectrum, but it, it doesn't happen, it won't happen, no, it and it's happen. not really imaginable. But here's my point. <laughs> I, here's what I, I guess I'm saying is, here's what I'm saying kind of. It, it's... It's easy for me to find humor in a cartoon that disagrees with me. In other words, it's from the opposite corner ideologically. But the way cartoons are done, they're often sufficiently gentle and humorous in their commentary that you can go, ah, that's kind of amusing, I get the point. Whereas with the average blog post, and I think it's partly a function of the form, uh, there's, a little more, uh, there's a little more sticking the sword in. And, and let me quote from one of your blogs, if you don't mind, you, Tom. You may. Okay, so this is about you know, the, 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 the financial mess that was brought to us by people who are not always uh, being held accountable. And one form of unaccountability is like these guys wind up with bonuses, right, even though they ushered the economy uh, into hell. And your final line is, I don't understand how we're talking about bonuses when I think we should be talking about jail. That's the last line. Now, I maintain that that's a different tone from from your average cartoon yeah. and is a little that's, fiercer. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that that may be a uh, uh, – if you look up to the, the title of the, that post, it's uh, Friday Rant. Friday Rant. Which I might do every week depending on how ranty I feel on Friday. I see. But, no, I uh, – because – I thought I would give myself a little, but actually, I think somebody ought to go to jail. I, it's you know, you know, I can I talk about your book yet? The one I not not all of them, but the one that I actually read, the one that I think is most. If important. you're not going to talk about all of them, I just assume you didn't talk about any of them. <laughs> well, go, all right, I read this book, which was by somebody I can't remember whom, and he said that. Uh, that human beings, as part of the social, the wiring for social interaction, have a very finely attuned sense of when somebody is cheating on a bargain. Mm. Very finely attuned and very, very strongly felt. Well, I think that's right. And I think in this financial collapse, it's we're so far out of uh, any level of balance accountability uh, rewards and punishment i mean it's 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 really hard to for me anyway because i don't know everything but it's hard for me to know exactly where to put the blame but i know for a fact that the blame that has blame that's deserved hasn't gone anywhere and i think that when that happens, uh, you, the this person who wrote this book didn't say this. At least I don't remember that he did. But uh, I think when it goes unaddressed, it becomes a toxin in the system. I think if you don't keep up on these mm-hmm. things and you don't keep a sense that there's fairness going around, that the, it's a it's something that it's like justice only exists when everybody believes it does and uh, but if they do then it does and if if it isn't happening then the sense of a, a fair society i think it gets corroded i you know it society has a lot of ways that it recovers from this sort of thing but i still think it's a toxin and i think it's it's dangerous and wrong and i you know i i, I don't know how we skipped right over the whole part of accountability on this on this issue so yeah, uh, jail. Jail is, a, I think, is the right jail. place to start the conversation. Who should be in jail? I know uh-huh. there are no laws broken because they they uh, they repealed every single law that that re- regulated any kind of economic activity. But there's always a way to get somebody in jail. In I mean, jail, yeah, I think there's probably ways. You can indict a ham sandwich, as the old saying goes. That's right. Um, the uh, okay, but but still, I would. Say, I mean, are you feeling any? You could conv- You could you could express that view through a cartoon, and you no doubt have, right? Or have uh, you not? I I have tried. Actually, some things some things blog better than cartoons, That's and interesting. vice versa. I mm-hmm. have tried to convey that thought. I do four s- different sketches every day, mm-hmm. um, and I have tried to deliver that thought i can't i couldn't get it to to i couldn't get the the impact i couldn't get the thing to like hit i mean hmm. i could raise the issue and 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 
beat around at it a little bit, but I couldn't get it to connect. And the ability to to end with the word jail in a paragraph just somehow it worked good. better. Yeah. So you actually feel liberated. I mean, you feel that there are things you would like to express through cartoons that that are just hard to do, and, and you're expressing. I don't know. Well. I'm finding it, and I I didn't think that in advance, but I'm sort of finding that now. I didn't I didn't know whether I had any additional things to say. I mean, when I start cartooning every day, I never feel like I have anything to say mm-hmm. when I start, and then I think about it and think, okay, well, actually, I do have something to say about this and this and this. But I thought I was kind of using all that up in cartooning, but mm-hmm. there's a different. It's it's different. It, pure language just works differently. It's it, different. Yeah. It's nice. Right. It's, I'm enjoying. It. I don't know how long I will enjoy it, but right now I'm I, I I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Oh, they're good. They're good. The entries are good, and uh, uh, I, I encourage our viewers to check them out. We'll link to yes, the link to, over on the side there. Over the side, it'll change your life. The um, uh, but are you getting any feedback yet? It's only been a week. Uh, my editor likes them. That's really? always a good start. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, the uh, and, I, and, and are you ready for me to give you some blogging tips? A little well, well, blogging before, advice. I think before you can... we get to the blogging tips, well, I do do want to hear because I'm sure you're like you have the best tips on this. But mm-hmm. though I don't I don't look at the the comments every day. But I did look one day when I did something about uh, manned space flight, and mm. uh, th- I I suspected that there would be readers that would engage on that topic. Because... And that was a blog item. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, got, I, I, I had, I heard both from people online, and actually even one person in particular, somebody you knew, you know, uh, Joel Achenbach. Joel Achenbach. I ran into him in the lobby, and he said that thing you wrote about space, we got to talk about that. And I thought he was going to disagree with me, but he actually, actually has the pretty much the same opinion. Except, Which is that we shouldn't do the moon, and you're glad we're not doing the yeah, moon. Yeah, I'm not. We've yeah, done the moon. Yeah, he wants to go to Mars and dig. He said. Yeah. But you and Joel, you know, now there would be an amusing dialogue, come to think of it. Uh, I only wanted to talk to you, Bob. I, I can see Joel any day. I keep say you come to Washington. I always say, when are we going to have lunch? And you come and go, and you don't, like, have lunch. This is the only way I get to see you. <laughs> I'm going to tell Joel you don't want a dialogue with him. No, He's I'm pretty not. easy to offend. <laughs> I, I Joel, really, I, I, I didn't mean that. I was just trying to be funny. Oh, good. Well, then we'll, you two will be on next week. Um, so, uh, but wait, oh, here's my blogging tip. You want my blogging tip? <laughs> I thought there were several. It's down to one now. There's one, there's one thing you're clearly not picking up so far in, in the blogging genre. That is... No, is this a secret you want to give away? Because if you know the secret, why would you want to tell everybody so that everybody Ooh, knows? Oh, you caught me just in time. That was close. <laughs> that was close. Can we're you... talking my nest egg. We're talking sending my kids to college, and I just <laughs> almost blew it out of the water. Well, Thank you, Tom Tolles. Well, you can tell. I want to know, but I probably actually would rather hear afterwards actually, when I, all those I, other people aren't listening. No, no, I want to put you on the spot right. here. Okay. I noticed that in your blog post so far, also, I want credit for it when, when it changes and you start finally finding success as a blogger. No. And it's because of what you did in response to my guidance. I'd like a little bit of credit. What's the, what success as a blogger? Link. Link okay. to other blogs. Oh, no, I knew that. I knew that. Oh, yeah? Well, then how come we don't see any links? Uh, there's two reasons for that. Yeah. One is that I don't think that I'm so craven as to stoop to just a tactic to get extra readers. That's one reason. Yeah. But the main reason is that I just haven't asked anybody to show me how to do it yet. Because <laughs> I noticed you mentioned Matt Iglesias. I know, and I thought, oh, I know. I'm supposed to link. I know. And I'm you're supposed, supposed to, to link. link. Well, but that would not, be... not 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 out of any sort of professional courtesy, but of, out of crass self-interest, because you know they feel the, they feel the traffic. Given the enormous traffic you already command as a successful blogger, they feel the traffic. They reciprocate. They either reply to what you said and they link to you and bring you traffic, or they just kind of keep it in mind and down the road, you know, yeah, yeah, share yeah. the love. But but that just creates. I mean, it's a good thing, and I'm sure I will do it because. It's a it's a great idea, but thank you. Does it? Have you thought through the incestuous journalists' implication that you know that we're journalists are already tired with that in the old media for in a variety of ways, and but now are we? Just, are you just recommending that we you create a new system that? Uh, I mean, have you thought it all the way down the line? Is it a healthy thing or is it just a commercial uh, device? 
It's interesting that it is a. Uh, there's a serious question there, whether you realize it or no, not. Did I, you realize you'd ask that? No, see, no, no. See, that's what people don't understand about cartoonists. They they look at the funny picture mm-hmm. and they think, oh, this is something to chuckle about, mm-hmm. and they just keep sliding over the fact. Oh, well, actually, you know, if there's you think about, serious. well, there's, yeah, there's something there mm-hmm. besides the joke, mm-hmm. and that, I mean, it's like the court jester, of course, gets yeah. no respect either, but the good ones, you right. know, are are putting it in there. Tom, would you like to pause and talk about the tears of the clown when there's no one around? <laughs> I think you should get Glenn back on. The, or or Smokey <laughs> Robinson, uh, right. who authored those, those immortal lyrics. Yeah. Um, I think. He, he sang was, I, was I whining? I, no, no, I, no, I'm serious. It, you, what you're saying is, hey, you're not just a funny man, darn it. I was whining. I have a, I have a tendency to, to do that. And I apologize to you and all the, no, the viewers. No, you were asking a serious question. Yeah. Uh, and here, well, here's my take on it. Here, uh, it, it. At least here's my kind of serious answer is that, you know, originally the idea behind the new, new blogging and all this stuff was that it was going to liberate us from, you know, the control of this, this, this centralized control of the media conglomerates and, and these establishment elites. And now it was going to be, you know, everything was going to emerge from the grassroots and spring was going to arrive. But actually, linkage is part of the system, mutual linkage among bloggers, by which you create a new click of elites basically Isn't that what i just said yeah, that's what you just said but it, i just think you know <laughs> you didn't think i, I understood like, what i had just said well no i was i just think you know you're 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 laying out these very high level concepts and then our viewers who are lay people are not used to dealing in, in high concepts sometimes need a little bit of a translation Good process. business plan bob insult your customers i said they were lay people i didn't say they're stupid we have the <laughs> smartest darn viewers uh, in all of uh, this side of uh, Fox Fox News, and um, but 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 no, that's the that I do think I, I fleshed your idea out a little. But anyway, be that as it may, you know. In fact, an interesting thing there's a there's a, a graph that Clay Shirky used to trot around showing kind of how rapidly you saw a new centralization of traffic. You know, the blogosphere emerged, and then all of a sudden there was a a hugely disproportionate concentration of traffic on a few blogs. Yeah. Instant pun. So, so it's like meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Different people, but still an entrenched establishment. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm happy I could make clear to you what you had said, Tom, <laughs> but but don't thank me. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so do we want to say anything else about blogs or new media or anything? Uh, no, I'm done with that. Um, I have questions about... Well, the past and future of political cartooning, okay? Yeah. But let's start with the past. In the future, and I'm going to ask you, what is the future? Is the political cartoon an endangered species in the new media environment? I'm going to ask you that, but not right now. Right now, I want to go down memory lane a little and ask you how the genre has changed, if at all. And um, the uh, your aforementioned predecessor... Herb Block. Oh, somebody, he was my predecessor. Oh, that's that, right. I, I remember Which would make now. you his successor, yes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, here's a, a classic, you know, he was uh, McCarthyism, we remember well. This is 1954. Here's a very kind of straightforwardly, I would say, schematic, symbolic uh, thing where you have a guy... Uh, climbing a ladder and and he is labeled hysteria he represents hysteria he's climbing a ladder to the torch of the statue of liberty and he's going to put out the torch of liberty with this water and the meaning is pretty straightforward uh this is not the only kind of herb block cartoon you have but it's it seems to me a little more typical of the 1950s than it is of now in, in various ways yes what would you what would you say about that? And 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 let me just say, uh, to say that uh, you know things that are considered funny or cool now, or, or things that were written, done in the fifties or sixties are, are no longer considered funny or cool now, is not a comment on the person who created them. You know, times change, and and Jack Benny is not the style of humor that's in fashion, but he was still a pioneer, and so on. So, with no prejudice meant toward anyone that we speak of. Uh, 
What do I have to say about that? What do you that? have to say about this cartoon? Um, I actually think that's one of his really, really good cartoons. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think, I think it, you know, it, it, he knew what he wanted to say. He said it very, very clearly. The, I thought the picking the fire and the flame of the Statue of Liberty was really appropriate for what he was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think actually that cartoon kind of represents the bullseye of what that era of cartooning was about. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right, it's different. And it's and it's funny that you should mention Jack Benny because I was going to mention Bob Hope. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the tone, it's, it's part of it is tone and the tone of humor has changed. I mean, the, the, the Bob Hope, punchline with a like a but um bump at the end mm-hmm. uh that was that was the standard uh comedic idiom and it had a certain feel and then you know it was in the 60s that political cartoon like everything else started to change and uh it's like it's like music there's pre-rock and roll and there's everything after it's uh I mean, music keeps changing now, but that was that was the watershed. Cartooning went through the same thing. It's not so much uh, Bob Hope. It's I don't know who would be a Steve Martin, maybe. Um, I think yeah. I think political cartooning, like everything else, caught up with the radical change from pre-modernity to modernity, or mm-hmm. now post-modernity, and. Uh, then I mean part of the I mean it was a great cartoon. That one of the things that's different is the thing that you mentioned is the labeling of I can't remember if it was a guy or the bucket, but it was hysteria. Mm-hmm. That was probably more you know. Other than that, that cartoon would be happily reproduced by most cartoonists working now. But the hysteria thing was just a little bit more overt than most cartoonists right. would be comfortable with right now. Right. Um, okay, and, uh, and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't his only style, the, uh, here's something that, that's, uh, this, uh, I, I, also a McCarthyism cartoon, and what, and this is of interest to me, because I actually wrote my senior thesis arguing that, uh, that Dwight Eisenhower had done more behind the scenes to derail Joseph McCarthy than was appreciated, but anyway, this was written at the time, and, and, uh, and the the view was certainly that Eisenhower was not up to the challenge. And you've got a picture of Eisenhower drawing a feather uh, from his scabbard. Is that the term? Is that where you put a sword? Anyway, um, and, and McCarthy is sitting there with it looked like a meat cleaver. Uh, and it's clear that Eisenhower is no match. Uh, and he says, have a care, sir. Um, and that's, um, there you, you know, that's not... You don't have that thing where an abstraction like hysteria is represented by a person. Um, would you say that uh, is, is that in, is that cartoon in any in any way different from what what you do today? You sent me a, a bunch of files, Bob. Was that one of them? That was one of them. Yeah. I sent you three cartoons, and that was one of them. <laughs> well, I actually got three cartoons. I wouldn't call that a burdensome <laughs> homework assignment, Tom. Well, I have this way of I have a way of of managing to get through like two thirds of an email and somehow getting distracted. I mm-hmm, missed that one. Mm-hmm. I can, however, I did look at that third one. If we want ah. to jump ahead to that one, I Wait, no. I mean, I just, I apologize. You you gave me my homework. No, no, it's okay. Like, it's I okay. I'm my, I am routinely ignored and and derided um, and disrespected. And <laughs> for me, it's a way of life. Okay, so the third one I sent you is 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 very different. And and I think this is then in 1975. This is late hair block, and I think. It's much, it is, there's clear movement and change here in the nature of the cartoon. And what it is, is um, it's, a, it's a U.S. agent <clears throat> listening in. Somebody's wiretapping somebody and saying, when people say we're still wiretapping, it makes me so mad, I feel like talking right back to them. Yeah. Um, now, that, that, you're right. There's some change. There's some consistency. I mean, the change is, is that there's a point of view in there. But it's the point of view is like like one half step off to the side and couched in this joke about 
something else, the conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that's that I would say is how it was different, is that he was using humor, and fairly effectively there, I thought, to come at an issue, a real issue, sideways. Mm -hmm. But the, the way that it's the same is look at the facial expressions. You might want to hold it up again mm -hmm. for the viewers. Mm -hmm. The facial expressions are are more overt. The guy in the back, I mean, the guy right. in the foreground is very, very, very angry. I mean, it's like right. pretty pretty clear how angry he right. is. And the guy in the back, you can almost see like exclamation points coming off his, his head. They're not there, but you can almost picture them. It's just a, it's a slightly, you know, more overt style of portraying uh, the emotional content of a situation. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is is more in continuity with where cartooning had been in the 50s. And, you know, we all get locked into certain, certain qualities of our own style. Yeah. So then what kind of changes? Am I right in thinking that Oliphant, yes, who is you're, what? Whatever is you're going to say, yes, you're right. He was... The watershed. Uh-huh. And how... Where is... I mean, uh, he is of what... I assume he's um, somewhat older than you? A little. He's from Australia, uh -huh. originally. Got Came to, to Denver Post. I think it was Post. Rocky Mountain. No, I think it was the Post. Anyway, he, uh, he brought with him sort of... I, uh, the European style... Maybe it's partly reflected in the Australian political cartooning style. He he imported. See, I don't think he invented everything, but he brought definitely a different feel. Although it it paralleled in some degree the the sensibility of Mad Magazine. So it's sort of like hmm. it dovetailed into that. But again, it, he he as I recall it anyway, he showed up in the somewhere in the mid '60s, and it was just an entirely different tonal quality in mm -hmm. his cartoon and uh everything changed after that there's <clears throat> pre uh oliphant and post oliphant and the uh am i right in thinking that he i mean first of all would you say that you are in his lineage to some extent to a degree i'm you know, I if you're going to trace lineages, which I think is an interesting exercise and actually has some validity, but you can only get so far with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not like biological lineage. The lines are messier because you get your influences messier, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Jules Pfeiffer was also mm -hmm. a very strong influence on me. Oh, yes. And uh, he comes from a, yet another whole different hmm. uh, type of, of way of looking. I mean, he very sort much. of invented, as far as I know, Probably not. No one does. But he, to my mind, he sort of invented his. Own, this is the whole world of Pfeifferism that I found intellectually. Of what? What was that word? Pfeifferism. Oh, Pfeifferism. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Herblock. I think he was my predecessor. That guy named Herblock. He's oh, I heard that. Yeah. He's credited with the uh, coinage of the word McCarthyism. Is he? Yeah, and he gets a lot of like pats on the back for that. Huh. Well, I just coined Pfeifferism. And Congratulations. I, I <laughs> equal credit, you know. And I rightism there too. I've coined I prefer, I prefer Bobism, but it's up to you. You you're you're the coiner. <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, Pfeifferism. It was a it was So a so but thing. but he was not a newspaper editorial cart I mean he's still around, but he's right, he's still yeah, well, yeah. Village Voice, is that a newspaper? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's such a different thing. I mean now we're getting at you know Mark Stamity and I mean that was I don't think anybody there was in it. It was a classic uh, newspaper editorial cartoonist. No, right? that's true. But um, but why why confine the conversation to that classic thing? Why indeed? Yeah, why indeed? Why indeed? So did uh, did Oliphant also pioneer? There's this thing that you uh, used, I knew. You, I knew this was coming. I'm the ready little guy, for it. The little guy at the little little the mini the commentary within the commentary. Oh, yeah. The little thing at the bottom. Uh, let's let's put it this way. Yeah. Let's put it this way. Um, several. <laughs> You know, I get asked this. I should have put this in the list of questions. Hey, this is starting no, no, to get insulting. When you, you know, you're, you're, you're acting know. as if these are totally predictable questions. That one is. That one is. Uh, but I have an answer, and it's mm -hmm. not a bad answer, because I saw that, 
when I saw, and I had not seen anything like that before, and I thought that's that's great. It's it's an interesting uh, off scale. It's related and unrelated at the same time. It does sort of the same work, but also different work. That's that's a great invention. I wish I had thought of it. Never could touch that. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much, I think, the way. I don't want to speak for him, uh, but I think I think Pat uh, does. He, he, I think he he harbors some not entirely kindly feelings to my using that same type of device. Mm-hmm. But I considered it off limits until I was in the library one day going through books of old American cartoons, and it turns mm-hmm. out that that kind of off scale <clears throat> marginal commentary was like part of the part of the genre i mean like a hmm. lot and i thought well really? that's you know that's not anymore so then so then in response to the allegations uh the, the, that you are a thief you replied that pat oliphant is a thief is that, is that a fair way to <laughs> well, i don't know did i did, did either of us steal the idea of a word balloon i mean some things are just part of the you know, yeah i mean did did uh did da vinci steal the idea of using oil paint I think he should be flattered, even even if you are a shameless appropriator. And I'm not saying you are, Tom. Don't get me wrong, but I, I but but really, I mean, he, I I would think if it were the case that he founded this little this little tradition, which apparently is not, uh, he would he would be rightly flattered. But anyway, I want to I want to show a place where I think you put it to good use. And this is also this is the last one of your cartoons. I will uh, embarrass you by showing. But I also I think this is a a funny cartoon. B it's an example of a not very ideological cartoon. And C, I think the little commentary in the bottom is, uh, is, a, is a really nice little funny addition. This is called Healthcare the Newborn, okay? And you've got, you know, and there is, of course, this stereotype that, that Republicans are the daddy party and Democrats are the modern party. It shows healthcare as like a baby. And it's got the mother, the Democrat donkey, just gushing, you know, over the baby. And the Republican elephant father saying another mouth to feed. And that's not an especially ideological comment. I thought you were right? going to say that's not especially clever. No, I think it's great. <laughs> I, I think it's great. It, it, you, you don't claim that the insight, you're clearly playing off of a well-known idea. It's a funny manifestation of it. And then what I think is really funny is the little thing at the bottom where you've got the father, the elephant saying, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the father. That being uh, 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 something of an understatement, uh, given the uh, how emphatic the Republicans were in denying Yeah, yeah, well, any that's sometimes actually it, it turns out that, that that little thing down there uh, is it turns out to be the, be the best part of the cartoon. And, and in terms of space and time, uh, it's certainly the minor part, but the interesting thing is maybe it's not interesting to anyone uh, but me. But since we're pretending that all this stuff is interesting, we are. Um, I do four sk- rough sketches of cartoons every day, Correct. and um, I do them without that. And I select which cartoon I'm going to do without that. They're they're designed to be complete without that. And so <clears> while I'm inking. I am trying to think of that, and sometimes it's, it's hard, and but sometimes, bing, there it like it needed to be there all along. Now, I said I wasn't going to show another cartoon, but you have almost compelled me to because you mentioned that you you tr- you have s- several cartoons that are in the running. Several of them you discard in favor of the eventual winner, but it's now the case that when people go online, they can see one of the sketches you discarded, right? That's correct. See, that's another of the the. The beauty of the new information age. The new online world. Yeah. Uh, the um, and I have one of them here, and it's uh, it's I guess it's about it's got to be about Tiger Woods. It says America's moral outrage, and uh, it's got I guess a somebody a golfer labeled T who is hitting the ball. Um, the golf, the, the flag is labeled, uh, you know, the, the pen, the, the flag that marks the hole that you're trying to get the golf ball in is, is labeled American Ability to, to Sustain Moral Outrage About Anything. And then uh, below the, uh, are you a golfer, by the way? Not yet. Oh. Do you play well, golf? I, uh, I, I play a little if golf. If I took up golf, then could we hang out together? Absolutely. I'll play golf with you. I bet you'd win. There's a chance, <laughs> but uh, and I would. There's not many people I'd say that about. But somebody who's never played golf, yes, there's a chance. Anyway, 
instead of the the I ask because uh, what you've then done is is conflate two images. Instead of the actual hole, you've got a drain, and you do come across drains in the fairways of golf courses. And uh, but I gather the well, you tell me. It, it seems to me slightly complex symbolism. Um, but but uh, do do first of all a little uh, anything you want to say about this cartoon. And also why you finally just kind of abandoned it, All right. uh, I guess. I actually don't remember it very clearly, but uh -huh. as you describe it, it seems vaguely familiar. <laughs> I think what sunk it was that uh, all that uh, verbiage on the flag started yeah. to put it in the category of uh, the hysteria label. I mean, yeah, that's interesting. I had that thought that, that that it had some of that. It had some of that sense. I mean, um, I, I liked I liked what I wrote up there, but. If you have to spell it out quite so overtly, it's starting to weaken it as a cartoon. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the comment was, you know, uh, it's it's the comment, what a peculiar culture we have. I mean, mm -hmm. on the one hand, things are outrageous. On the other hand, oh, my God, he's back in the Masters. How great is that? I don't know. What is what is it all? What What's what's the bottom line here? It's... I. So I wrote it all on the flag, but it was too much, too much. It's going down the drain. See, that was the drain. The drain. So are you gonna are you gonna blog Tiger Woods? What do you, what what would you say if, uh, if you if you said it a little uh, more at length? I don't know what I you know I haven't actually given it a whole lot of thought because my my I don't watch a lot of television. I don't watch professional sports. I don't care about them. I don't really care about Tiger Woods. I think he's you know it's it clearly one of the rare cases where somebody has an ability that's like several magnitudes greater than everybody that's an interesting thing but mm -hmm. i'm not that interested in golf and i'm not interested in him and i'm not interested in his personal life um you know I, I mostly i just don't care but other people do care i just don't i i'm I'm perplexed at the at where it nets out as to how America feels about it. I, I'm I'm confused. Well, there is though, but there is a phenomenon manifest in this, which is the increasing transparency of people's lives. You know, more. It, I think it's harder and harder for people to do things in secret with the confidence that they will not eventually be yeah, publicized. But at, yeah, but at the same time, you've got, you've got. I mean, it's the whole loss of privacy thing, but at, right. at the same right. time, the, 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 the meaning of privacy is being devalued. So, okay, your secret comes out, you're just another flawed human being that has his secrets out in the open like everybody else has got their secrets out in the open now. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a loss, but the loss is 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 devaluing at about the same rate as the as the loss of privacy. So I don't know I don't know where that gets you. It's yeah. different. I don't know if it's it's worse or better. It's like this guy you know about the Sandra Bullock Jesse James thing, right? Only again, I just well, she, you know, here's my advice to women everywhere. <laughs> Before you marry a guy named Jesse James, <laughs> think twice. Doesn't you know, it's just it's just not an auspicious name. Did he have, Did I see a picture of him with a, an entire arm full of tattoos? Well, it's hard to say because his uh, alleged illicit lover uh, has a whole body full of tattoos, and so you, you may have been conflating two I images. Would have been, it would have been like just like a cartoonist to do that. Am I going to get a chance to ask you a question about that book that that guy wrote that we're not mentioning his name? Sure. Or is this not the right time? I don't know how much time we have left. Are we running out of time? Uh, no, we're not out of time. I did want to ask you okay, about... Okay, all right. All right, all right. you I, want to ask me about the I'll future. I'll ask you one more thing, and then the you can ask me... The future of political cartooning. All right, I'll start with... Is that the question? The f Yeah, because, you know, I mean, cartoons are have traditionally been appendages of newspapers, and newspapers, some people think, may die. And, and then, in general, you know, genres change, and, and, you know, blogging comes, and what came before it goes, and so on, so... What it, do, do you think the political cartoon is an endangered species? Uh, the political cartoon in its classic 19th century Thomas Nast form will mm -hmm. never die. Hmm. No, it, it's a preposterous statement. I just, but, you know, you can't, equivocal statements get you nowhere. But here comes the equivocal statement. Who knows? Uh, pro, I mean, it's a fairly, re, in terms of the long 
span of human history, the the particular thing that you would identify as a political cartoon is sort of short lived, and I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, disappeared in it within a decade. On the other hand, I can easily see it going for another hundred years, and it touches on one of the things I said before. You know, you said, well, Pfeiffer is outside that and Stamity are outside what you would consider the classic political cartoon. Well, yeah, but uh, there's no reason that political cartooning has to stay in that frame. Uh, I mean, if you, would, I, w- I would choose to define political cartooning as, as, as uh, informed opinion presented with a visual component. Mm-hmm. That's how I would define it. And if you define mm-hmm. it that way... Uh, probably you, you couldn't kill it off if you tried to. Well, sure, but if you define it that way, you're including things like flash animation and even, you know, video mashups, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I agree with you there, but is there is there the prospect that those kinds of things, animated things, video mashups, and so on, will essentially displace the static one-panel cartoon? All right, here we go again. The answer is yes, unequivocally. But see, but who knows? I mean, why yeah. why would you ask for an answer like that? I mean, I know that's the way conversation, public conversations go. You have to say yes or no, uh, yeah. or some some you, you say yes plus plus or no never. Uh, I I've been actually surprised how nicely. And I do a pretty darn conventional, I mean, almost backward. I've, I've started colorizing some, but essentially I'm still working in black and white. Essentially I'm still working with a pen on paper. That's pretty darn primitive. But, I, you know, I look at them online and I think they read pretty well there. I think readers have liked them mm-hmm. there. I think they still work. But we'll find out, you know. It's not like I it's not like I have some investment in you know, I, I didn't even actually I didn't even want to be a political cartoonist. How's that? How's there's a headline for you? Well then here's a question I'm sure you've never been asked. What did you plan to be, Tom? I I didn't have a plan. You know, they say what do you want to be? You know, as a kid, first of yeah. all What'd you say? I said king of the world. And how has that worked out? It's it's I've I've gotten closer than I was, but I'm it's it's I haven't like been given the official designation yet. You're not running a video website or anything. No, but that's what I wanted to be. And then I, I you know what else? Well, you can't be the king of the world because there actually isn't one. And if there were, you probably wouldn't be in line for for that. And the other, I wanted to like climb mountains. And my brother told me, well, that's not actually a job. That's like now, a plus it, plus it's stupid. That's the other thing about it. Oh, well, it's it turns out to be pretty dangerous. Yeah. But uh, after that, what were my choices? I actually, uh, my first choice was n- doing nothing. Yeah. I mean, so you say, I think that's a total lie. (laughs) Well, that's a little bit of a lie. I think that's a total lie. I think, I mean, (laughs) I think you sit down with with methodical efficiency every morning and you generate these four cartoons. I mean, that's pretty... That that that's pretty. Uh, uh, that's methodical. I'll give well, you that. Well, yeah, it's it's driven. You're a driven man. Yeah. You should seek help. You should seek professional help. You're driven. Not every cartoonist would be so. I don't want to use a loaded word like you know. If, that, if it's a flattering word, go ahead. Uh, I don't know. It's, anal retentive OCD. Oh, and you tell me when I get to the flattering <laughs> stuff. But to sit down and when you only uh, have to generate one or now two, now that one goes online as an extra. To sit down and create four every day, you you're, you're, you know, don't act like you were in the running to be a slacker, Tom you, told. You left off that I get up at five in the morning when the deadline isn't until nine at night. Yeah, okay, I rest my yeah, case. Yeah, but no, they're not mutually exclusive, actually. You can be reluctant to do something, but then once you decide to do it, you can, mm-hmm. then you can become driven about it. Uh huh. That's those. That's actually. That's possible. It's coherent. To, to I think this. I think you're living a lie. <laughs> that's. <laughs> uh, I don't ask me to disentangle my psyche. I can. I can. I can chase around that. Yeah. that subject a bit, but I cannot un- disentangle it for you. Well, then I will be in charge of that. But for now, I will uh, cease and desist. <laughs> um, and now, do I can now? Can I ask you about your book? Uh, he, you can ask. Yes, you can ask. You can ask me anytime. All right, but now it's fine. I just read uh, Non Zero. I know you wrote a long time ago. At first, I want to 
pay, pay you a, a genuine compliment. I think that's a, it's, I don't know how much, I mean, you flushed it out really thoroughly. And I was really admiring of the way you were honest, like all the way you point, and you not only acknowledge your weaknesses, but I mean, weaknesses in the pattern of your argument. Right. But you went out of your way to like really delineate them clearly. So, uh, and the idea that human history has been directional like that towards and towards greater and greater uh, uh, social complexity uh, based on the uh, the advantages of mutual behavior where the the sum is greater than than the the parts that's that's a and facilitated by te- i'm going to get to my question i'm going i'm almost i i'm already i'm, 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 already, I'm, I'm, I'm already fatigued with the the compliment part of this um i thought it was a great book i think it's a great concept and you know what i think well before i get to my question mm-hmm. i think you should stop the well, I shouldn't. No, in addition, in your spare, you should still do the blogging heads because I I'm a fan of that. But in your spare time, mm-hmm. I think you should start. Why didn't you start the non-zero institute? That's what I want to know. The Be- non-zero institute. Yeah, because I think it's such a compelling idea that mm-hmm. you could apply the concept to all kinds of problems and mm-hmm. analyze, search out, map out what some of the optimum non-zero solutions to mm-hmm. intractable problems would look like mm-hmm. and just say here that here you know i i understand your argument well enough to know that just just the existence of the the i mean the possibility is sort of a an attract it it tends to happen but often it doesn't happen i mean there's a tendency to 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 hit upon the non-zero solutions but sometimes they're really slow in coming it seems to me that the non-zero institute could you know just by putting it out there you know i'm totally on board with this now not to not to uh jump too quickly to the sheerly pragmatic i haven't uh, asked my question yet but oh what's uh, can i ask mine where would i get the funding for this Oh, isn't that what you do? <laughs> I, I or do, do, it, do it as well as you play golf. Uh, I do it about as well as I play golf, I'm afraid. All right, here's my question, though. Okay. That the aforementioned uh, column that you're writing for the New York Times, you wrote uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. one that struck me as just really bizarre to have been written by the guy who wrote that book. Mm-hmm. You said, you know, I mean, a huge part of your non-zero argument is that technology pushes us along. It facilitates mm-hmm. it. And then mm-hmm. you wrote a column about how the Internet was making politics in the United States so difficult because it was organizing all these disparate elements in a, in a non-helpful uh, sort of way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know, you can, I know you, can, uh, uh, you can sort that one out for me, but I sort of wanted to hear you do it because it was like, I thought, well, how odd. Um, yeah, the argument was that uh, technology facilitates the organization of interest groups of a narrower and narrower sort. So, like, uh, computerized mass mail seems to have been a prerequisite for the AARP becoming a truly powerful force. That's a special interest. And that now, with, with you know, the online world, interest groups can, can organize so easily that you get narrow interests, you know, uh, fighting for their piece of the pie. Um, and it's true that that can impede the kind of non-zero-sum solution at the national level, like finding a, you know, a budget or a set of policies that on balance are kind of good for the whole nation or something. But I would say two things. First of all, <clears throat> that is technology facilitating non-zero-sumness in the sense that the members of the special interest group Finding each other, for them to find other people who share their interests through an information technology is for them to find people with whom they're in a non-zero-sum situation. And, you know, the interest group is a collection of people who, among each other, are in a non-zero-sum relationship. They have a common goal. They want to pursue it. So that that is technology doing what it's always done. And, in fact, I think in the book Non-Zero, I talk a little about the, the kind of tribalizing effect of the technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, 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 I sort of get that. I mean, I get it. I, it just, it just, it intuitive, the, the two things intuitively m- well, move in different directions. Well, they do, because, because then what, what is happening, I think, is 
I am saying that right now there is a failure. Uh, I mean, all these groups, although they are, uh, they do have their own interests and, and, and are in some ways in a, in a zero-sum relationship with one another, are also in, this, in a non-zero-sum relationship in the sense that they are, they li- we all live in the same nation. It is in our interest to have some sort of way to get, like, essential legislation passed and, and, and so on. So we do have certain common interests, and if, if this technology is impeding the solution of that giant non-zero-sum game, then you're right, that's a, that's a failure to kind of realize the non-zero-sumness. So, so I agree with you that, that it's, it's kind of ironic. It's a case of, not, of technology not magically solving... Um, yeah, but it seems to me that I mean the the missing the only missing ingredient and in what you just laid out there is that uh, it seems like you're leaving out the intermediate step that that what appears to be a backward step in terms of these interest groups is really and maybe even could be calculated out as to be a, a positive thing, but a, a temporary backward step that eventually creates an exchange of information and involvement that then sets the stage for a different type of step forward. It seemed like that was the, yeah. the thing that was missing that I was sort of looking for, is how 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 you were going to... And you never really did. You just sort of well, said this is a bad that, thing. I would expect that to happen. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought, but you never really said that. Yeah, I mean, you could say you could see a similar thing at the national level, where technology in one way crystallizes nationalities like like the new technology has kind of revived gaelic as a language you know it has it has helped uh you know kind of revive the 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 francophone you know the 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 french speaking uh interest group in a way in in canada um right. and but you know carried to an extreme without any yeah, way but, to in- integrate them at a higher level right uh but I, I would just put that in the category of the fallacy that uh, you can take a trend line and project it forward for an ex, for forever. I mean, there are a lot of mini trends that go this way before they loop around and turn into something else altogether. Yeah. Yeah. You know that. All right. I know that. Right. I agree. I, I, you can write an afterword if you would like. <laughs> no, I'm I'm already. It's it's my head is starting to hurt. And now, now that now that the Washington Post has gotten you to write for free, uh, I just we have to, not established that. You, I would like to jump on this bandwagon. <laughs> um, we have well, we have established. Anyway, if you if you are writing for free and <laughs> without saying that that's what you're doing, you are not alone, buddy. Many many journalists. Uh, anyway, you you are. Uh, this is a fascinating new uh, supplementary thing that's, that's uh, we'll going see. on with we'll your see. blogging. We'll see. And we should all take a look, and you should take my sage advice and start linking to other blogs. And, um, and you should keep cartooning. Too. Uh, and, and, uh, and we will link like crazy to your collected works, your, your oeuvre, as it were. All right. And thanks. And, and, like, do you think you might do this again sometime? I mean, we know we, you've established you don't like Joel Achenbach and don't want to do it with him. But well, maybe we've also some- established when I, I give you a list of questions beforehand that do not ask these particular questions. That- oh, that was the do not ask <laughs> list. Ah. Uh, yeah. That. Okay. Next time I'll, I'll, I'll read the label. Okay, it was a pleasure talking to you, Bob, and 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 all those those references, the the Bob Crush references that I I keep returning to. I you know I think your site is great. Ever since I started watching it, I think you've got a really really interesting take on the world. Very valuable. I I mean that sincerely. And whether we do this again or not, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I I feel honored to have had a chance to talk to you and that's all the sucking up I'm going to do. The feelings the feelings are mutual and that's way more sucking up than I normally do, <laughs> but they are. Anyway, thank you so much for having me. Okay, thank you, Tom. Take care, Bob.